Bent Weber has just developed the narrowest silicon conducting wires ever made, 10,000 times thinner than a human hair. These wires are essentially the thinnest conducting wires in silicon, only one atom tall and four atoms wide. While that's remarkable in itself, it's the way the wires act that has intrigued the science community. In fact, Bent's findings have earned him a lead author credit in the esteemed Science magazine. Bent's discovered that the ease with which an electrical current can flow does not depend on the wire's size. This behaviour is described by Ohm's law, a fundamental principle in physics taught to every high school student. This is a conventional copper wire which is essentially a millimetre thick. So the wires we made are about a million times smaller while they still have the same current carrying capabilities which this copper wire would have. The result is interesting for many different reasons. If you, if you look at the conventional semiconductor industry, devices get smaller and smaller every year, and this has been going on for many, many decades. And the, the question is, what happens when you get down to the level of single atoms? So you can actually, we've started making single atom devices, but to actually address that atom, you really need a, a wire or a gate or a contact that is as thin as the atom itself. These wires or small interconnects essentially bring us a step closer to um, the realisation of a scalable quantum computer in silicon. But what exactly is a quantum computer? The thing about a quantum computer is you move away from the classical regime where you have bits of one and zero, that's kind of conventional transistor technology. In the quantum world you actually have a quantum bit or a qubit and there it's in a combination of both one and zero states. And I guess the key difference between the two is in the quantum world you can actually do calculations in parallel. So you get this predicted exponential speed up in the computational power. And that's the real excitement in the world at the moment. Can you actually make a practical quantum computer? An international research team in the ARC Centre is working intensively on that very question. They're developing the science and technology of a global quantum information network. The applications are vast. But I guess if you look to the long term, then people are looking at things like weather forecasting, um, being able to search through large databases of genes for biological technology, um, anything that has basically a large amount of informational variables where you can search quickly and get the answer. So we get students from all over the world that come to the centre and want to work with us. The key thing that I tell them when they come in, the results that I expect that they will get during the three to five years that they're here will be so outstanding that they can choose anything they want at the end of the day. Bent will be able to go anywhere. And so he's still, like I said, he's still got some very exciting results to come out um, beyond this paper. So we're looking forward to that. But yeah, he, he, the world is his oyster.